Hi guys, welcome to this video looking at how you can work out the maximum mass of any product or reactant from a chemical equation. The best way to be able to do that is to have a look at a worked example. So I've got a question here that says 12 grams of magnesium reacts with excess oxygen. Excess means more than needed, so we've got more than enough. And it forms magnesium oxide, and you're asked to calculate the maximum mass of magnesium oxide formed. It also gives you the balanced equation of 2mg plus O2 goes to 2mgO and it gives you the atomic masses of magnesium which is 24 and oxygen which is 16 and it tells you it's worth 3 marks. So what you need to be able to do is take that information and work out the maximum mass of magnesium oxide produced. Now there are three major steps to be able to do this, one of them which is ridiculously easy and the other two it's going to take a bit of practice to get your head around. So if we start off with the first step, which is to work out the relative formula masses for the two substances. Now you should all be able to do this, but if you can't, let me show you what I mean. So the relative formula mass, nice and simply, is adding it all up together. So the things that we need from this equation are the magnesium, which we've got two of them. That two in front of the mg means I've got two times whatever my atomic mass of magnesium is, which is 24. So two times 24 gives me 48. So my formula mass for my magnesium in this reaction is 48. The next thing I want is what I need to find out. So that's my magnesium oxide. So I know I've got one magnesium, which has got a mass of 24. And I've got one oxygen, which has got a mass of 16. So if I add them together, that gives me an atomic mass of 40. However, if you see that big two in front, that means I've got two lots of my MgO. So whatever my 24 plus 16 is, which is 40, I times that by 2. 2 times 40 gives me 80. So you're going to get one mark just for working out the relative formula mass. Please, please, please do not lose that mark in the exam. It's easy. The second step is to divide the relative formula mass, which we've just worked out, of the compound that you want to know the mass of, which is magnesium oxide, by the relative formula mass of the thing that we've been given, which is our magnesium. So let me show you that in the actual example. So as I said, divide the MR, the formula mass of what you need. So in this one, we want to work out the mass of magnesium oxide. So that is the thing that we need. So we put that in at the top. Now we worked that out before, magnesium oxide had a mass, relative formula mass of 80. And then we divide that by the mass, the other formula mass that we've worked out. We worked out the magnesium, that's the thing that we've been given, 12 grams of that, so I put in 48. That was my formula mass for my two magnesiums. So I divide 80 by 48, and that gives me 1.67. And once you've done that, the final step is the easy one. All you do is you take whatever that number was, and you multiply it the mass that they give you in the questions. So that's usually the mass in grams. Could be tons, could be kilograms, whatever mass they give you. So the number we just worked out was 1.67. All we do is we take that number and we multiply it by the mass in the question that was 12 grams. So 1.67 times by 12 comes to 20.04, 20 grams. And that's gonna get you your third mark. Now, usually in the exam, if you come out with 20 grams, you get the right answer, they're gonna give you the full marks, but always put your working down, because if you make mistakes, you lose everything. You put your working down, you might get error carried forward. If we have a look at a second example then, so question two here says, what mass of calcium is needed to produce 100 grams of calcium hydroxide? You've got the atomic masses, calcium 40, hydrogen one, oxygen 16, and you've got your balanced equation, Ca plus two H2O goes to CaOH in brackets two plus H2. So what you need to do is exactly the same as what we just talked about. So step one, work out the relative formula mass. So we want to work that out for calcium. Now we know calcium, there's only one of them there. It's got the mass in the question, so that's 40. Calcium hydroxide, again, we've got one calcium, so one times 40. Inside the bracket, I've got one oxygen, but outside of the bracket, I've got a two. That two applies to everything in there, so that means I have two oxygens. 16 times two is 32. I've got one hydrogen inside the bracket, two of them because of the two outside the bracket, so I've got two hydrogens. You add all those together, you get your relative formula mass for calcium hydroxide out to be 74. So that is stage one done. Stage two, divide the MR of what you need. So this time we need the calcium, we don't need 
the calcium hydroxide we've been given that. So the thing that I put to begin with is 40. That's the atomic mass or my MR for calcium. Then it's by what I have. Now I was given the information for calcium hydroxide, so that's what I put below. So 40 divided by 74, which comes out to 0.54. So that's my second mark. And then the third mark, I multiply whatever my answer was, which is 0.54 by the mass in the question. 0.54 times by 100 gives me 54 grams. And again, 54 grams would get you all three marks, but please put your working down, otherwise you might lose some marks. Okay, time for you guys to have a go. So I've got a question for you. It says calculate the maximum mass of sodium carbonate Na2CO3 formed when 40 kilograms of calcium carbonate reacts with excess sodium chloride. So the two chemicals you want to work with are Na2CO3 and CaCO3. So step one, work out the formula mass for both. You should be able to do that. That's an easy one mark out of three. Step two, work out the thing that you need, sodium carbonate, divide that by the thing that you have, calcium carbonate. So whatever your formula mass for sodium carbonate is, divide it by the calcium carbonate. That's gonna give you your second number. And then all you do for the third mark is multiply that by your mass. So 40 kilograms, and your answer will be whatever that comes out to in kilograms. So pause the video, have a go, and we'll see how you've done in a min. Right, let's see how you've done. So we're gonna start off with the formula mass, step one. So I'm gonna go with sodium carbonate to begin with. I've got two sodiums, so two times 23. I've got one carbon, so one times 12, and I've got three oxygens, so three times 16. So that gives me 106 in total. Calcium carbonate, I've got one calcium. I've got one carbon, and I've got three oxygens. So add that all together, it comes to 100. So you're gonna get one mark for having the formula mass of 106 and 100. Step two, divide the thing that you need, the thing that you need to find out, that's your sodium carbonate, which was 106, by the thing that you have. The thing that we had was the information for calcium carbonate, which is 100. So 106 divided by 100 gives me 1.06. That's your second mark. And then finally, all you need to do is multiply the mass by that number. So 40 times by 1.06, is 42.4. Don't forget to put your units in. We started in kilograms, so we finish in kilograms, and that's gonna get you third mark. And again, if you put 42.4, if you've worked it out, you would get all three marks. And that really is all there is to it. So I have got a review question for you, which says, calculate the maximum mass of water, H2O, produced when 15 grams of hydrogen peroxide, H2O2, decomposes to form water and oxygen. So you've got the balanced equation, you've got the atomic masses, have a go at it. And that brings this video to an end. Hi guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please click on like down below. You can also subscribe to my channel, you can check out the latest video, and you can visit my website up above here. Bye now.